Today's sponsor of the video is Magic Spoon. Head on over to magicspoon.com slash dolphins to get $5 off of your first order of Magic Spoon. It's the healthiest, best-tasting cereal on the market, and you get $5 off. I mean, there's no better deal than that. Head over to magicspoon.com slash dolphins and be sure to scoop up your Magic Spoon. Before we get into this overreaction video, I'm frustrated as hell watching the Dolphins. I know you are too. If you are frustrated like this video, I mean, my goodness, we're all here together in this. This is a safe space. I am tired of watching Jacoby Brissett run for his life every damn snap because the abysmal offensive line that the Miami Dolphins have. And don't even get me started on the offensive coordinators. They're even more to blame than that. But if you are frustrated with this Miami Dolphins team, like the video. And let's get into these overreactions. Recap of yesterday's game against the Colts, 27-17, so we can really just kind of go in and really talk about these overreactions to start the show. Listen, Jacoby Brissett didn't throw for 200 yards. I'm not surprised with that offensive line and the play calling. Miles Gaskin, who? Am I right? Malcolm Brown led the way with eight carries and 23 yards, and at least Devontae Parker decided to show up for one game out of the first four this season, and really, it's just, it's hard right now being a Dolphins fan in the sense that you have to go out there and you know every Sunday that your offense is going to set your team back probably another 20 years and feel like you're going back to the 1980s, maybe even 70s with the type of play calling that these guys have going on right now. It's not the player's fault. The talent's there. It's just, man, the offensive coordinators are not helping whatsoever. And be honest with me. What is your one word to describe the Dolphins' week four loss to the Colts? A game where it really never even felt like they were in it to begin with. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you are feeling after this loss to the Colts in week four. Let's get to the week four overreactions, and I'm starting at the quarterback position. It's Senate time. He should get an opportunity at QB. Listen, I'm Jacoby Brissett is a historic backup outside of one season against the Colts, ironically, or other than when he was with the Colts, I should say, back a few years ago where he was the starter for most of the season. He's just not it, though. He's not good, and to be fair, some of it, it could be blamed on the offensive line. I get that, but you need to show a little bit more if you're Jac Jacoby Brissett with the weapons that you have in the sense that you have Jalen Waddle. You did have Will Fuller, who now has a broken finger in his considered week to week you have Devontae Parker you have Miles Gaskin you have all of these weapons but yet you decide to dink and dunk you got to take shots downfield and maybe Reed Sennett is just maybe naive enough as a second year quarterback to go in there and take some of those deep shots to these playmakers that you have on the outside let's run through the stats for the Dolphins offense so far this season and if there are children looking at the screen tell them to turn away this is absolutely horrendous 173 yards passing, just north of 78 yards rushing for a total of 277 yards per game and 15.5 points per game. Just why even watch? Like, I mean, my goodness, this offense is just making it damn near impossible to watch half of the football game for the Miami Dolphins. I mean, it's worth a shot, right, to put Reed Sennett in there at least until Tua tonga Viloa comes back, which he's on track. He started throwing, according to Brian Flores, after the Colts game, so maybe you get him back at the earliest possible date against Jacksonville in London in week six. But at the same time, do you even want Tua behind that egregious offensive line? I mean, I don't at this point. Just you got to save the franchise quarterback that you took in the top 10 last year and at least give him a chance. And right now, you don't have that chance. At least Reed Sennett, second-year guy, maybe comes in, lights a spark, maybe flips that switch for the Dolphins offense and the coordinators to try something new. It's worth a shot, in my opinion, but let me know. Should Senate get a chance at QB type Y for yes, type N for no? I mean, I'm probably leaning towards yes just for the sheer fact that Jacoby Brissett isn't bringing much. I mean, he had a couple of good drives in Las Vegas, then the Dolphins came up short in overtime, as we all know in that one. But again, try something new because what you are doing right now is the Dolphins offense just strictly isn't working, and that's at the quarterback position as well. Got a shout out today's sponsor of the video, Magic Spoon. Head on over to magicspoon.com slash dolphins to get $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. Listen, I'm in love with the cocoa personally. I'm really fond of Frosted as well. Those are some of my favorite cereals, but I love the benefits that Magic Spoon brings as well. 13 to 14 grams of protein, only 4 grams of net carbs, and 0 grams of sugar. 
Nobody else is doing this in the cereal game. I can go out at night, you know, after maybe I've gone to the bars or something like that, and I don't want to get a taco. Instead, I get Magic Spoon at home, and I don't feel guilty about it. And I'll have two or three bowls while I'm at it. Cocoa's my favorite flavor, as I mentioned. It's probably going to be your favorite flavor as well. Head on over to magicspoon.com slash dolphins to get $5 off your first order. And, hell, make it a four-pack and get a four-pack. Get some frosted, some fruity, some cocoa. They've got some maple waffle in there as well. I mean, they are changing the cereal game with the grams of protein and uh, really no sugar they have in there. Head over to magicspoon.com slash dolphins and save $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. Speaking of the Dolphins' offensive line, it's just – it's not fixable at this point. Like, I've given up hope, um, specifically on one guy in particular. I don't like calling guys bust this early on in their career in the sense that you spend so much draft capital on a guy in terms of in the first round and everything like that, but Austin Jackson ain't it. I'm ready to give Leon Eichenberg a chance at this point. Just – Give him a chance on the offensive line, whether that's at right tackle, move him over to left guard, maybe next to Jackson if you want to maybe even throw Grant Little in there. But Eichenberg does need to start now. Jesse Davis isn't the answer. Jackson isn't the answer. You have too many holes on this offensive line to at least not even give Eichenberg a chance. And don't even get me started on Austin Jackson. He only played four snaps on special teams in week one in their win against the New England Patriots. And yet he still leads the NFL – and QB pressures with 20. Like, how the hell do you do that if you're Austin Jackson? My goodness, he's had eight, six, and six, respectively, the past three weeks in terms of QB pressures. Just what are you doing, and why is he on the field, Brian Flores? I mean, how is this offensive line this bad with the draft capital that Chris Greer put into it? You think about it. Robert Hunt, second round. Liam Eichenberg, second round. Jesse Davis is a journeyman. Sure. Dieter, third round. Kinley, fourth round. And then you got Jackson over on the left side. That was a first round pick. And don't even get me started on Grant Little, who was basically given up on by the Carolina Panthers for a seventh round pick. And he was a second round pick by them a few years prior. Like, what's going on here? How is this offensive line this bad? Is it Brian Flores? Is it Chris Greer? Is it the offensive line coach? Like, somebody's got to tell me what's going on here because it's just impossible to watch this offensive line week in and week out when it seems like Jacoby, Brissett, Tua. Shoot, you could put literally, I don't even know, Patrick Mahomes behind this offensive line, and it probably wouldn't be great for him at this point. This offensive line really reminds me of the Chiefs from the Super Bowl. It seems like every time there's a snap, there's pressure in the QB's face. Something has to change, especially with the draft capital you spent on this offensive line. But let me know, which player frustrates you the most on the Dolphins' offensive line? I'm in the boat, Austin Jackson. I've seen it in the comments on previous videos that Austin Jackson is the guy that just needs to be benched at this point. I'm kind of right there with everybody in the sense that how is it this bad this quickly, right? Last year, you can excuse it for – Maybe being a rookie just wasn't a great situation, but you're in year two. You want to see a little bit of progress. Think about this. He had 38 QB pressures last season. He has 20 in three games. Like, what are we doing on the left side of this offensive line? Something has to change and fast, not only for this offense to take that next step, but just so your quarterback isn't being harassed every snap. You don't want Tua to be back there and hinder his development right now. Something has to change and quickly for this Dolphins offensive line. Listen, we're trying to get to 17.5 in terms of subscribers. We're grateful for everybody that's already subscribed. But send this video to your friends. We know that, listen, this isn't the way you wanted the Dolphins season to start out, right? They're 1-3. and three, They're going in. They're playing the Super Bowl champs and Tom Brady this weekend. And doesn't look great, right? But Jacksonville's around the corner. That's good. Uh, Trevor uh, Pick 6 Lawrence is right there down there in Jacksonville. So we'll have plenty to talk about all season long. Send this video to your friends. Help us get to 17.5 in terms of the subscribers on the channel. And, hey, we might even shout out the next couple of subscribers we get right here on Miami Dolphins today. Next one I got in terms of the overreactions for week four, Godsey or Studsville has to go. I don't the, – the problem with this is who the hell is calling plays in the first place? Like – just let me know that first. Brian Flores, tell us openly in a press conference who the hell is calling plays for this offense because, again, it's just abysmal. Let's look at these offensive stats one more time just in case you missed it early on. 173 yards passing, 78 yards rushing, 
277 total yards per game with only 15.5 points. Not to mention you got shut out just like the Houston Texans did against the Buffalo Bills. But, oh, it's worse. You did it at home. Okay? There's so many flaws with this offensive line and just offense in general that, I mean, I don't even know who the hell to blame from the coaching staff. Brian Flores seems like the easy scapegoat, but I want to know first and foremost, who the hell is calling the plays? Like, I don't even know that. Is it Fry, the, the quarterback coach? Is it Studsville? Is it Godsey? Tell me. Just literally tell me who I can place blame on here because something has to change with this Dolphins offense and quickly because there's too much talent, right? There's too much talent on this Dolphins offense for them to be 1-3 and three and averaging 15.5 points per game. And we got Jacoby Brissett up here on the screen. I don't think it's totally his fault. Something has to change at the quarterback position. Just with Reed Sinnott going in there potentially, maybe a light switch just goes off for the offense and the offensive coordinators. I don't know. I'm just praying at this point. Because with the Dolphins offense, there has been zero adjustments. Literally zero. What has changed since week two when you got shut out by the Buffalo Bills? Nothing. You played the Raiders whose defense is... All right, uh, at some places, they have a really good pass rush, Max Crosby, and you scored there, but really that was just in the later part of the fourth quarter and then in overtime. Outside of that, you really didn't do much, right? I mean, you had a pick six, and that really helped your numbers out in that game, but then you look at what you did last week against the Colts, you did nothing until the fourth quarter again. Why is it taking you three quarters to adjust? I just don't understand. Zero adjustments whatsoever for this offense, but... You know what, guys? I'm just tired. I'm so tired of this Dolphins offense. If you're tired of this Dolphins offense and you want to change, hit that like button right now and let these guys know down on South Beach that something's got to change on this offense because the defense is just too damn good. It's too damn good for this team to be 1-3 and three right now and putting the defense in positions where they're on the field for 35-plus minutes. There's no defense in the NFL that's going to su succeed like that, especially the Dolphins, ones that has a couple of young guys in it, right? Jalen Phillips has looked good. You got Ogba on the other side. You have two of the best corners in the NFL, but it's just unbelievable at this point how tiring it is watching this Dolphins offense and the lack of adjustments that these offensive coordinators, QB coach, and Brian Flores and Chris Greer have right now. Just unbelievable. Like the video if you're just tired of this Dolphins offense and you want to change. Week four overreaction number four, it's over. This is a lost season, and you know who to blame it on? Chris Greer. I think he's the guy to blame it on at this point. Just the GM has had too many misses early on in the draft. You think about it. What has he done right in terms of the offensive line early on in drafts? You, you draft a guy in the first round in Austin Jackson. You get lucky with Dieter that he's a center and turns out to be good there. I mean, Jesse Davis, you got lucky there because he's really a swing guy and he wasn't even drafted early on. And then Eichenberg, he's a rookie. Okay. But you spent far too much draft capital, including on Robert Hunt in the second round for this season to go the way it is right now. And I get it. I'm saying it's over. This is a lost season. And I'll preface it by even saying this. This is the biggest overreaction of them all, right? I think the other ones are actually maybe not even overreactions, just thinking logically about this. Like, who the hell do we blame for this offense at this point? I don't know. You don't know. I don't even know if Brian Flores knows at this point. But you are putting the defense that has too many star players on it in a bad situation. Look at these numbers that the Dolphins' defense is giving up so far this season. 251 yards through the air, 137 yards rushing for a total of 405 adjusted after sacks are taken out and everything like that, and then 27.3 points per game. Like, the defense is going to keep you in games, but what the hell are you doing offense? You're putting them in a position where they can't succeed long term. This defense is going to be gassed by week eight, and we're talking about guys that – Xavier Howard is on this defense. Emmanuel Ogba is on this defense. You have a rising star in Jalen Phillips that looked sensational on Sunday, albeit against an Indianapolis Colts offensive line that was maybe missing the best guard in football in Quentin Nelson. But he looked great and is now officially a starter for the Dolphins, opposite of Ogba. You love what this defense brings, but at the same time, it can only keep you in game so long into the season, right? If they're playing 35-plus minutes a game, there's only so much you can do, and I'll be honest with you. We got to go back to the offensive line and just look at this. This is I, I know I sound like a broken record to some degree, but look at these people on the screen right now. What are we doing? Y'all are just terrible. We should just 
comment and just give them terrible nicknames down in the comments right now. I can't even look at Austin Jackson's face. Jesse Davis, what, well, I don't even know how you're a starter. That's how bad this offensive line is. Dieter, all right, whatever. Robert Hunt, um, I'm still the, the jury's still out on you. And then Liam Eikenberg, I'll give you a pass. You're a rookie. But this is the unit to blame for the Dolphins just really being one in three at this point, not living up to expectations. I know that there was plenty of people saying that they had a chance to potentially go up and be with the Buffalo Bills. That's gone. I'm just trying to get to 500 or a little bit above it at this point if you're the Dolphins with how bad this offensive line is. It's just infuriating to watch week in and week out the lack of adjustments, and mostly those lack of adjustments come from the offensive line. And I don't know if that's from Brian Flores or the offensive coordinators, but somebody, somebody has to take credit for it. I'm curious, though, what is your confidence level in the Dolphins moving forward? Scale it 1 to 10 for me. Man, it, this is difficult because on defense, I'd probably say it's like a 7 or 8, right? Like that defense is really good, but then we have to talk about the offense and the offensive line. I don't know, like a 2 or 3 at this point because I'm not sure if Tua comes back that he can even – you know, stand in the pocket and make a correct throw because, well, the offensive line is that bad. Let me know down in the comments, though. What is your confidence level in the Dolphins moving forward? Scale it 1 to 10. You can preface it by defense and offense. Right now, the offense, it ain't looking good, and somebody, somebody has to take blame for it.